Hey guys, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. I appreciate you guys being here today. I know it's been a while. It's been almost a year and eight months into this pandemic. I haven't talked too much SARS-CoV-2 infection and COVID-19. We're gonna get right back into it now. Today's episode, we're gonna talk about my favorite therapies and future therapies that I think are gonna have a significant impact on COVID-19. have to remember what SARS-CoV-2 infection actually does. We see lymphopenia, that is a reduction of lymphocytes. Those are B cells and T cells. We see an increased number of neutrophils. Those are the polymorphonucleocytes that initially present and begin to fight and recognize infection. Over the long haul, we see a reduction of certain types of T cells, CD14, CD16 T cells. And then the other thing that we actually see is we see a significant amount of inflammation in the end organs as a result of this immune system dysregulation. One of the molecules that's absolutely necessary to help clear the infection and help clear this virus is a molecule called interferon. Interferon's presence early on in infection is vital. It allows our immune system to create the molecules that are necessary to recognize what cells are infected and produce the molecules that are necessary to clear the virus. What we have noticed in people who become severely sick from SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19, they either have antibodies that are affecting their interferon, meaning the interferon is blocked, or they're not producing interferon, which might be secondary to the virus actually infecting those cells. Another therapy that we're using is a monoclonal antibody that inhibits the spike protein on SARS-CoV-2. These monoclonal antibodies are called Regeneron Cove and Sotrovimab. What these two monoclonal antibodies do are in patients who qualify, that is patients who have in a compromised immune system, elevated blood pressure, diabetes, chronic lung conditions, chronic neurologic conditions, any of these associated risk factors for severe disease, it prevents hospitalization and severe COVID-19 when these drugs are given promptly. Another medicine that you probably haven't heard about too much is called fluvoxamine. Fluvoxamine is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. What happens in SARS-CoV-2 is platelets begin to aggregate. You increase their activation. So you can get clots in these patients. 20 to 40% of patients in the ICU have clots. What fluvoxamine actually does is it doesn't allow the platelet, which can't produce serotonin on its own, it doesn't allow the platelet to uptake the serotonin, which it needs to cause this aggregation. So you're essentially inhibiting platelet function. Other medicines that you may have heard of, there's a medicine called baricitinib, Baricitinib is another type of autoimmune type of medication that we give to patients that have autoimmune disease. It namely inhibits a certain receptor on cells so you cannot activate some of the inflammatory products creation. So it inhibits inflammation. In fact, baricitinib in combination with a medicine called remdesivir does show some benefit in patients who present with severe COVID-19. You've also heard of a medicine called tocilizumab. Tocilizumab is another type of monoclonal antibody, only this monoclonal antibody inhibits a cytokine called interleukin-6. Interleukin-6 is a molecule that's involved in cellular recruitment. It allows white blood cells to float to a certain area of the body where it's present increasing the congregation and leading to a flooding of the end organ of these white blood cells, not allowing that end organ to function properly. Speaking of other cytokines that you like to inhibit, there is a new drug and it's going through phase two, three clinical trials right now called lenzilumab. 
Lenzilumab is another type of monoclonal antibody, but it inhibits a molecule called GMCSF. During SARS-CoV-2 infection, GMCSF gets released. Once it's released, it ends up leading to the production of interleukin-6, other types of cytokines, interleukin-8, uh, possibly TNFs, other types of interferons. In our trial that we've done already with lenzilumab, patients who received lenzilumab who were not on the ventilator, there was more survival in patients who did not need mechanical ventilation. In other words, less patients were on mechanical ventilation and more patients survived because of the use of lenzilumab. You guys have heard of the medicine called dexamethasone or decadron. This is a glucocorticoid. It's a steroid. And what steroids essentially do is they inhibit the production of some of the inflammatory mediators as well. And they're kind of a general inhibitor of inflammatory mediators. Up to this point, this is the only molecule that has reduced mortality in phase three clinical studies. So we use that pretty religiously in almost anyone who has COVID-19. All right, here's the other drug. And this is a drug everybody has heard about. Everybody thinks it's a magic bullet, but it isn't. But this drug is called ivermectin. It was originally discovered in 1967. And it was discovered because fungi actually produced this. What does it do for patients with SARS-CoV-2 infection and COVID-19? When you look in the Petri dish, what it ends up doing is inhibiting a lot of inflammatory mediators. It may also inhibit the virus's ability to bind to a different site called CD147 on the cells causing infection. In the process of inhibiting these inflammatory mediators, people have suspected that it could be used in COVID-19. So what did they do? They did clinical trials, randomized, controlled trials. They showed no benefit with patients who were on ivermectin. The trials that you have heard about are all retrospective trials in which patients were not only on ivermectin, but they were also on glucocorticoids or steroids, which we know have a positive effect on patients with COVID-19. We have to understand that each individual is an individual. When you look at particular individuals that have a condition called common variable immune deficiency, that is, they do not produce the antibodies that are necessary to clear infection. Again, in our body, there are five types of antibodies, IgA, IgM, IgE, IgD, and IgG. IgG is the most abundant. It's the antibody that floats around in your bloodstream. People who have common variable immune deficiency don't produce it. Guess what? If you have it, there is IVIG that you can give. It's out there on the market. So one of my secrets is in patients who can't produce IgG, a lot of elderly patients can't, I give them IVIG. In fact, when you look in the literature, you can see case reports of patients who have a significant benefit of IVIG because of their lack of production of IgG in their bone marrow. So once you give them IVIG, they have a very positive response and some of these patients have pretty miraculous recoveries. I appreciate you guys being here today. I appreciate you guys trying to understand which therapies are up and coming which therapies are necessary and can eventually lead to helping these patients. I find that extremely helpful and extremely useful. Let's continue this discussion and I'll continue to update this list. I want you guys to understand that all I'm doing here is arming you with information. So next week, I want you to come back for some more ammunition. Thanks for being here.